Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a module that we just recently found called invoke a D check. So this is going to be really useful, especially if you're a system administrator or a active directory administrator, this will actually let you run a security check on your active directory, letting you know multiple different things about your accounts and maybe some of the settings that you don't know that are set, like how many, uh, computers that any regular uh, user can join to your domain. When was the last time that your Kerberos account had a password reset? Um, Cause those are recommended to reset twice a year. Also how many accounts don't require passwords to log in? How many inactive accounts? It gives you a really, really good view of your active directory environment. So let's go and first just check out the GitHub for this. Um, so the GitHub is uh, by SensePost and it is called Invoke AD Check. I'll be posting a link to the module and the GitHub on the description. The install is fairly actually simple. You can't use the install dash module like you would typically, uh, but they do provide a pretty easy install. Now for me, this actually didn't work at 100%, so I just want to go over how you potentially would be able to then just run these two commands and it would actually work. In most situations, it should work, but if your situation is like me and your module paths are a little bit different, uh, you might not be able to do the import module immediately after downloading and installing the module this way. You might have to do a copy into a different directory or add something to your module path in PowerShell. So let's go ahead and let's actually start that. So we're actually gonna just go ahead and copy these lines here from the GitHub page to install it. So basically what we're doing is we're just downloading uh, the actual install PS1 and we are actually invoking that as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up our PowerShell 7 as an administrator, paste that in here, and we are going to see that it does say that it has uh, saved and it is now uh, uncompressing the zip file to our users administrator documents windows powershell module invoke ad check and then it says you can now import the module with import module name invoke ad check now if we actually go ahead and do this you will see that it worked for me because this was already installed for me um, but what i actually had to go ahead and do was actually copy this so if i do an end module path here, we will see um, that the C users administrator documents Windows PowerShell module uh, is not actually here. So what I actually had to do here was what we can simply do is if we copy this and we could do copy item and then we could do path and we can just paste that in here and then we can do destination and we can go ahead and we could just send it over to our proper destination here which is going to be there and then if we actually go ahead and we open it we will see that it is in actually in our documents powershell modules but by default for me, it was actually in Windows PowerShell module and it was right here. And in my module paths, I don't have that location. The other solution would be to add that path into my PowerShell module path and it would work just as well. So let's go ahead, let's just clear the screen so we don't have anything else on the screen here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an invoke AD check. And that's all we're gonna do for this line here. And we are going to run this. Now, if you're missing anything, it's actually going to prompt you if you actually want to install them. So what I'm actually just going to go ahead and do is just hit the letter Y. And then it's going to install. And then there is our report here. Now, this is our report looking through the CLI. But I actually like this way because it gives you a very clear picture of exactly what's going on. And I'll show you guys what you can actually do as well on top of this. So here it'll give you the actual Active Directory backup and give you the last backup date. Now, 
let this be known. This is just a very test environment that I only use for YouTube videos. I don't really do a whole lot with it. Sometimes I'll blow it up and recreate it. I haven't rebuilt it in quite a long time. There's probably going to be a new series where I'm building a new home lab and we're probably going to build a brand new Active Directory environment. Um, and then here it's going to give you the basic default security groups and actually tell you by default how many members are going to be in that group. So you can actually see the discrepancy between what you have and what the default is actually. Um, so here we can actually see that our administrators, I have seven, typically there are only three. Uh, domain admins, there are five, typically there are only one. Uh, and then we can also see the default administrator account. We can see the last logon date marked as sensitive is false, which that should be true. And then the password last set was quite a long time ago. We also have, it comes up with the default domain policy and the minimum password age is one, which is in red. So again, this would be something that you would go and want to update to the minimum requirements. I won't actually give the minimum requirements here because those do actually change with time. And then the maximum password age here is 42. Um, and then we also have the operating systems and the on the domain controllers, the functional forest level. Uh, we'll also see a lot of the GPOs as well. It will also show us the guest account, which we actually see here. The password last set is never, but it is actually not enabled. Um, so maybe you just want to set a password for this account and then you'd be okay. Now here's where it gets definitely a little bit more interesting. It'll show you the Kerberos encryption types. Again, anything in red needs to be looked at, addressed. Um, we can actually see some that are not defined and then some that are using actual encryption types. But one of them is RC4, which is definitely deprecated and not recommended anymore. Uh, so I would actually want to go ahead and disable that encryption for the Kerberos encryption types. And we can also see here the Kerberos ticket account here. Um, the last password set, of course, is when I set up the Active Directory environment, which was back in 2003. Obviously, the password should be reset at this point. And then this is the other interesting one, the MSDS machine account quota. So this basically means any account in my domain here can actually domain join up to 10 machines or 10 computers. This is definitely something that you would actually want to be at zero and only allow your domain administrators or administrator accounts, whether you make that a specific security group or a specific OU or something, you're going to want it to be specifically administrators or your IT department to be able to domain join. You're not going to want anyone to do this. And what's really nice is if you just copied this and this, let's say you just don't know what this is, you can easily copy paste this into Google and search up recommendations. If we just open up the browser here, uh, there's this security assessment, unsecured domain configuration. And then here there is the set MSDS machine quota to zero. So you're going to want to definitely have that at zero. If this comes up with any number other than zero, uh, we can see that there are no protected users uh, in the protected user security group. And then the tombstone life for me is 180. So that is good. And then here we actually have the user account health. So here I can actually see that nine of my users are actually identified as inactive. Um, one of the account does not require a password and then three accounts have a password never expires. So what we can actually do now, this is a really quick info. Now this doesn't tell me which accounts are inactive or anything like that. So it is not super useful here. So what we're actually going to want to do is you can actually run this invoke AD check with some output types. I like to put it to all. Um, it'll give you a JSON, a Excel, and a text file. I find the Excel definitely the most useful. So let's go ahead and let's just run this here. And once again, just gonna ask for this. We're just gonna say yes. 
And again, if you don't have the import Excel module, it will actually install that module for you. So it is very, very nice. You don't have to rely on actually having that Excel module installed and it'll tell you exactly what to run to go see those files. So let's go ahead and let's copy that line of code here and let's run that. And that's going to open up the folder with all the different document types here. So let's go ahead and let's just open up our Excel here. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and switch screens. All right. So here we actually have the Excel document up here. Um, and here we can see the backup status and you're going to have a lot of tabs at the bottom here. So you're going to be able to see the built in group memberships. Again, you're going to see all those different groups. You're going to see what, how many members they typically have by default. Let me just zoom in here because it resets on the administrators page. You're going to see all the different administrators that you have on in your domain here. You're going to see their Sam account name. You're going to see their distinguished name. Um, so you're gonna be able to see all that, all your domain administrators. So these are all the ones that are going to be part of the domain admins all the people that are going to be part of your schema admins here. Um, also the ability, the uh, group policy creator and owners, you're going to be able to see that as well. All your enterprise admins, uh, your default domain policy here. So here we're going to see the minimum password age. Now, the reason why I like to look at it through the CLI here is on this one, you wouldn't be able to tell that there is a actual a problem with our password policy because there's nothing in red or anything like that so we wouldn't know that the one and the 42 are actually something that we need to improve on which is why i like to look at it through the cli but where it really gets interesting here so if we actually just go here uh, of course we can see the machine quota as well uh, we can also see the root acl the tombstone the account help uh, so this is where we were seeing the number of users, how many are enabled, how many are disabled. And here we can actually look at all the users. So this is going to be all the users in our domain and all the real useful information, the last logon date, whether or not the password is required, whether or not the password never expires. And here we can actually see password not required equals true here on this second line. And we can see that that is the guest. So once again, it's not enabled, but that doesn't mean that someone can't go ahead and enable that account. So you'd still want to fix those vulnerabilities. And then we can actually go ahead and see all the users that are actually enabled. Here they are. All the users that are disabled. Here they are. Um, all the users that are deemed inactive. Um, these are all the users that are deemed inactive. Again, you're going to want to be careful before just deleting these because you're obviously not going to want to delete your Kerberos uh, ticket account either. Um, and then we have our password not required, password never expires. So here's the password not required. We've already seen it on the other tabs here, but this is just our guest user here. And you have a very nice Excel report that you can go ahead and bring either to your Active Directory team, or if you are running this as the Active Directory team, you would know exactly kind of where to kind of start, what to prioritize on what you actually need to fix. If it's the encryptions, if it's the just how many users, um, how many computers can a regular user join to the domain, you can easily prioritize those with your team and your security team um, and your managers, and then go ahead and work on those. But the invoke AD check definitely makes that very, very easy um, to actually go ahead and do. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and minimize that. And then of course, you can always do specific uh, checks as well. So if we go ahead and we just do the invoke AD check, and then do a control space to know all the different parameters here. Um, you can specify a lot of different options and you can specify checks. And here you're going to get all the checks. So you can look at the default domain policy, domain controller, domain trust, functional levels, GPO, GPO permissions, guest account. There are a, a laundry list of different things that you can check. 
I would recommend just doing a check all so this way you don't actually need to add any parameters and then put output types as all. This way you have a Excel document uh, that will have all of those values, but also it'll also dump to the command line interface or the CLI and you'll be able to see the items that are in red that kind of need to be addressed. And then you have your Excel document for the actual documentation, taking that somewhere and giving it to people. Maybe you're going to want to open up the Excel beside your CLI and mark the things as red inside the Excel document. And then this way, when you bring that to management or bring it to the rest of the team, you would know exactly what needs to be assessed or changed. That is all for this quick tip. There is one thing to note. There will not be a video next week as I am away uh, for a little bit of time and then the videos will resume after that as normal if you guys have anything that you guys would like to see on these quick tip videos please let me know in the comment section down below and i'll do my best to do every single one also if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button hit that like button also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and i will see you guys on the next video